The story that you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts, featuring characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Leonardo Manesho, better known as Nardong Putik, was a Filipino gangster from the Cavite province of the Philippines from the 1950s to 1970s. He credits his anting-anting or amulets with supposedly protecting him from any fatal harm. Manesho was born on March 25, 1925 in Sabang, Dasmariñas, Cavite. At that time, Cavite was mostly grasslands and a target for bandits, cattle rustlers, car nappers, and smugglers. A far cry from the modern Cavite that we are more familiar with today. Manesho's father requested for Jose Barzaga, a wealthy Dasmariñas resident, and requested for him to become his son's godfather during his baptism. Barzaga belongs to a wealthy clan with members who were prominent lawyers, landowners, and politicians in the town. His father, Juan Manesho, was a former and politician of some consequence in his town and enjoyed long-time affiliations centered on the prominent political clans, the Karungkongs, Mangubat, and Barzaga families, not only for economic reasons, but more for protection. In those days, criminal activities like violence, mayhem, murder, robberies, were almost a daily occurrence. Due to his father's alliance with the Barzagas, his father became a target and was murdered and robbed of their livestock in their home in 1944 by his political rivals who belonged to a cattle rustler and an armed guerrilla group and were vying for control over the turf in Dasmarinas. This moment changed Manesho. Starting out as a driver and a policeman in the town of Dasmarinas, he eventually fell into a life of crime as a henchman of notable political dynasties in Cavite. He participated in murder, kidnapping, armed robberies, illegal possession of firearms, and illegal growing and dealing of marijuana. His ragtag group of bandits grew and his influence was felt throughout Cavite. He was the outlaw king of Cavite with the underground completely under his control. It came to a point that Cavite's politicians realized they would need Manesho if they wanted to ensure their hold over the region. And so, the criminal became the very image of his father's killers. As the urban legends go, Nardong Putik got his name from his tactic of submerging himself in mud paddies to escape the policemen hunting him. He used bamboo or papaya stalks as breathing tubes and was famous for believing that anting anting or amulets protected him against ambushes, gunfights, and arrests. He even tattooed the magical medallion on his body along with Masonic protection charms and the word kilabot or terror across his lower abdomen. And a terror he was. By 1952, Manesho cemented his reputation as a man not to be trifled with when he carried out the Maragondon massacre, where the mayor, police chief, and several policemen were killed with hunting knives as directed by a political figure who is suspected to have hired Manesho and his gang to execute them. For that massacre, he was convicted and jailed but managed to escape prison in 1955. Just two years after his escape, he carried out the infamous Election Day killing in 1957, which ended in the deaths of Lt. Col. Loriano Marania, the provincial commander of Cavite, and seven others. Cavite politicians were also found to have been in league with Manesho, utilizing him in their struggle for political supremacy. A year later, he surrendered to the police after a 45-minute gun battle. Manesho credited his survival to his anting anting. He was given a 182-year jail sentence in Belibid prison for his crimes. But even imprisoned, his reputation and influence couldn't be tampered with. He was granted certain privileges by the Marcos administration, which allowed him freedom to leave the maximum security prison and to roam around the penitentiary grounds under certain conditions 
like assisting the administration during the election season, particularly in the 1969 elections, the most violent, the most rigged, the most fraudulent election in the history of the Philippines. He escaped prison for the third and final time in 1969 and was able to find refuge at his hometown, which led to a 20,000 pesos bounty on his head set by the new acting governor of Cavite, Juanito Johnny Remula. In his time as a fugitive, Manesho managed to kill two National Bureau of Investigation agents who were on his tail. The death of two NBI agents coupled with Manesho's mounting crimes triggered the formation of an NBI constabulary force with one goal, to capture Manesho, dead or alive. And based on news stories and police reports, they were leaning toward dead. Reportedly, Lieutenant Colonel Miguel Gantuanco, one of the task force's commanding officers with NBI agent Epemaco Velasco, attempted to coax Manesho into surrendering via Bishop Vecedo of Caloocan, but the attempts proved fruitless. On October 9, 1971, Pure Locke handed Manesho into the hands of the police. They found his hideout. The following day, Manesho's red Chevrolet Impala came upon a task force highway checkpoint between Panamitan and Kawit. Manesho refused to obey the signals for him to stop, and the 20 assembled agents and police officers opened fire. Unfortunately for him, no amount of anting anting was enough to save him. He was killed instantly, his body mutilated by the bullets beyond recognition, thus ending the reign of Nardong Putik as the outlaw king of Cavite. On his person was a revolver, 300 pesos, $150 in counterfeit bills, a wallet, a notebook with information regarding his debts, and several false identity papers. There are a couple of other versions of Manesho's death that floated around. A version stated that he was inside a nearby resort where he was allegedly drugged and when he was unconscious, his limp body was brought into the car and he was propped up against the steering wheel to make it appear like he was driving. It was at this moment when supposedly the lawman began their orgy of gunfire at the unmoving, defenseless Manesho. The other version stated that one of his friends invited him to a gathering that was being hosted by a Cavite political leader. When Manesho became tipsy, a condition that is supposedly forbidden for individuals who carries an anting anting because the amulet loses its effect. He was hit on the back of his head and he died from the injury. His body was then turned over to the authorities who staged his death. The convicted criminal and fugitive's reputation was enough to erase the respect he earned from the locals of Cavite. In his last years, he became known for targeting the rich and endearing himself to the town folks of the province. His death was met with mixed reactions. During the modern warlord days of Cavite, when cattle rustlers would harass farmers, the people didn't turn to their local politicians for help. They turned to Manesho because they knew that he'd settle any issues immediately. To them, he was the judge, jury, and executioner with the ability to keep you safe from harm. But for those on his bad side, it was a different story. Despite being known as the Robin Hood of the region, Manesho was just as severe to farmers and locals as his rivals. For the farmers and locals who failed to cooperate with or pay Manesho, the consequences were often bloody. He created an entire system of protection payments known as his protection racket for landowners and tenant farmers. Farmers and Dasmalenias, General Trias and Imos paid him a large chunk of their harvest despite barely being able to survive on what was left. Contributing to a culture of violence and lawlessness, it was a system that preyed on the struggles of the weak creating a convoluted heroic image of a bad man. His legend only continued after his death, when two popular films based loosely on his life were made, with film star and future Senator Ramon Revilla Sr. playing Nardong Putik. The films portrayed him as a charismatic Robin Hood, an anti-hero for the poor who was protected by the magic of his anting anting, feeding his reputation as a renegade hero of the people.
Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.